You are now watching Zach Lesage, the best place to learn about competitive Pokemon TCG. Let's get it! Yo, what's poppin' peeps? Welcome back to the channel. Zach Lesage here, Word. Today we're gonna be going over the top eight of the late night season two invitationals. So in this match, we have Evan Campbell playing against Azul GG and a Mew VMAX Mirror. If you watch the late night invitational or you check Limitless, you watch it all unfold, but be sure to check out the description for both players' lists, subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and let's jump into some awesome gameplay. So here we are jumping in to the top eight of the late night invitational for season two. We have two great players that have played amazingly all season long. We have Azul GG and we have the amazing Evan Campbell. So Azul's done very well on a lot of, lot of the late night events here, and we're gonna watch a Mew VMAX mirror match. It, it could really go any way here, so we're gonna see exactly how that works out for a lot of these players. But right now I think that it's just gonna come a lot to getting set up for the Mew VMAX matchup. So right now Azul with the Battle of the IP pass, looking pretty good. So overall, really not that bad. Um, you really can't help but ask for anything for like a battle VIP pass. So Azul absolutely crushing it, starting it off, probably doing a thorough search of his deck, uh, making sure that every fusion strike energy is there, every boss is there. So we'll see how that plays out. Still searching. Sometimes players do a long search just so they don't have to do searches throughout the rest of the game. And I think that's, uh, it's really interesting. So going up with the double Meloetta, I think is a great strategy. It does stop Evan from using escape rope on one of those Pokemon. So if, if Azul retreats into a Meloetta to end his turn, it's one of those things where the Meloetta is a single prize card Pokemon that might not get knocked out by Meletius Echo. Because Meletius Echo allows you with an Elsa Sparkle and an energy to do anywhere between 140 to 210 on the first turn, not including any power tablets. So you really gotta watch out for your Pokemon V that can get absolutely destroyed in that process. So you can see Azul's sending up the Meloetta as a sacrifice, has a backup Meloetta, and it really leaves Evan in an interesting spot here. So we'll have to see how that plays out. So it's really one of those things where we're gonna see how Evan handles this. Evan could go for a strategy that revolves around knocking out a Meloetta, knocking out a Mew VMAX, and then knocking out a Genesect. It looks like Azul by default is gonna be going for a strategy that knocks out three two prize card Pokemon, likely three Genesect V. So Evan might have to play around that a little bit, watch out how they bench their cards. It's going to be really interesting overall. And I think that's, uh, that's probably the most exciting part about it is like Mew matches are very vicious and very quick and it, it it could really go any way. Just Azul starting off first, I think is usually kind of the home field advantage. It might be a bit of a struggle here for Evan to get set up in the process. Uh, although Evan does have enough cards that they could play out of their hand. They got Escape Rope. They could actually play out their entire hand to draw four with Genesect's Fusion Strike system. So we'll have to see how Evan decides to go for it. I think maybe going for the Meloetta might be good, although the Meloetta would just probably get knocked out in return. It goes really back and forth on how aggressive you want to be in this matchup. So Evan does look like they're ready to kind of attack, but the escape rope first, I think that's why Azul played down another Meloetta to instantly send up another Meloetta so that Evan doesn't go turn one, draw two prize cards and really sets the pace of play. So Evan does have access to that energy. We do see the fusion strike system. So that energy or sorry, the fog crystal that can transform into an energy will be put on top of the deck. And it looks like Evan's going to slap that onto a Meloetta, take a prize card turn one uh, with Meletius Echo and see how Azul responds to this. Azul's got six cards in their hand, a couple Genesects on the board. So it looks like anything is a possibility. If you're Azul, you're probably gonna be wanting to knock out a Mew V with that Fusion Strike energy. However, that does leave Meloetta fully powered up to go after other Pokemon, such as Azul's other Meloetta. And that could take Meletius Echo off the field for the rest of the game. 
So it could really be anyone's game right now. And there's Azul with their own Elsa Sparkle, uh, just getting powered up, ready to kind of rumble here and respond with some kind of attack. You want usually want to pair your knockouts down um, if that makes anything or kind of go with knockouts at the same pace so you want to knock out single prize card pokemon with single prize card pokemon um, otherwise you're going to be in a little bit of a rough spot um, if you don't so a meloetta knocking out a meloetta is fine a mu v knocking out a meloetta not so good because that just means that your mu v could get knocked out in response so it's one of those things, if a single prize card Pokemon knocks out a two prize card Pokemon or a three prize card Pokemon, that is quite efficient. A three prize card Pokemon that knocks out anything else could be a little tough. That Fan of Waves is also really interesting from Azul because it does leave Evan defenseless if this Meloetta does get knocked out. So we'll have, we'll have to see how it all plays out. It's, uh, it, it's going to be a real interesting start to the game. I think Azul has a lot of techs uh, that I personally don't have in my Mew list. Now, Azul is definitely a player that I look up to in the game. I've definitely had my fair share of opportunities playing against Azul. So seeing cards like Fan of Waves and Vitality Band and Rotom Phone, I got to ask myself, am I doing anything else wrong with my Mew list? And the same thing with Evan, if there's anything in Evan's list like those Rotom Phones, should I include them in my list? That's what I really got to ask myself. So these are the real questions, peeps. The real, real questions. Will we uh, Will we find out? I'm, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll have to uh, see how that plays out. So we're going to see how uh, Evan responds. Evan's really going to be looking for an Elsa Sparkle to try to get some kind of response knockout. The issue is I don't think we're going to get to a response knockout because that would require triple power tablet, vitality bands, Elsa Sparkle, energy attachment. It'd be a huge turn from Evan. Uh, it just doesn't necessarily look like it's happening here. And I could be wrong. It really could. Uh, it could be a little bit different. But with the boss's orders, it looks like it's just not going to happen here at all. So there's the boss's orders. There's the Mew Max. You can't play boss and Elsa Sparkles in the same turn, which does make it quite difficult to deal with at this certain point. And yeah, retreating into a Meloetta using fusion strike system i think it would have been much better to use fusion strike system first before retreating that's something that azul did because now that there's all these other options you might want to change things up a little bit um but it looks like evan's just not playing anything down personally i probably would have played down another genesect v i would have maybe like kind of maximized and got my hand set up for next turn um especially if anything else gets knocked out so it looks like uh azul with their setup is in a prime spot to win game one and there's that Genesect V about to go down. Now, luckily that's not the Mew VMAX with an energy. And Evan does have an opportunity to attack next turn. Evan can still win the game in two turns. So we gotta watch that out. Azul can win the game the turn after this one by going Vitality Band, Mew, Power Tablet, Power Tablet, Power Tablet, knocking out that Mew VMAX. Also, if this Mew VMAX does not get knocked out, we can't count Melodious Echo off the table because Melodious Echo can hit for 280 base damage, which would basically allow Azul to use Melodious Echo for four uh, Fusion Strike Energy in play, 280 plus a Power Tablet to not get a Mew VMAX. Sounds like a lot of math, but I think right now Azul's in the upper, like they just have the upper hand in this certain situation. And I think that's all that really matters when it comes down to it. So it's going to be really interesting how uh, how Evan responds. They can either get a knockout on a two prize card Pokemon or get a knockout on the Mew VMAX. They have to do one of those this turn. They cannot attack that Meloetta on Azul's bench right now. So let's see how Evan goes. We're going to see a lot of Fusion Strike systems in the process. And 
we do see a boss's orders in hand. I mean, knocking out this Mew VMAX does protect Evan a little bit more uh, because it does take a fusion strike energy off the board. We gotta watch out for Meladius Echo in general. That is one of those things that could be a little bit difficult to deal with. Okay. Oh. So it looks like Evan's trying to go for the knockout here. I mean, there's still quite a few other pieces necessary. So I think going with the Kramomatic here seems good. Getting Tails there, absolutely devastating. I would have liked to see the Kramomatic first before we played uh, the boss's orders. So a little bit of a missequencing there. Uh, no power tablets there. So it looks like uh, this it doesn't really look like this is going to be going well for evan this turn because again we do need vitality band power tablets power tablet power tablets uh and it looks like with this fusion strike system going live evan can only draw three cards you need four cards for a combo drawing only three cards it doesn't look like it's going to necessarily happen even if those were all the exact cards So we're just seeing a max miracle and now Azul basically has two turns to win the game and Azul might just drop it on it. We, we might see Azul drop the dub on Evan like bricks. Mew can certainly hold on to a lot of cards. We're seeing a Kramomatic. When you see those tails, it might it, it seems a little bit less likely, but really anything could happen. Uh, I, I really think anything could happen here. So we're just uh, waiting on uh, what's going to go on. Will Azul play down the power tablets? Will Azul take this turn a little bit lightly? Azul could even go try to knock out a Meloetta or a Genesect. I really think this is anyone's game at this point. So yeah, it looks like Azul's totally going to take game one, and uh, Evan's likely going to choose to go first, game two. Here we go. Uh, we're going to be jumping into game two now. Evan did decide to go first this game because he did lose game one to Azul, uh, so we will have to see how that plays out entirely. It's one of those things where I see battle VIP pass. As a Mew player, I'm pretty happy. We got a Psychic Energy to slap down. That's going to be immune to Azul's Path to the Peaks. And I personally would have liked to see what's in the deck first with Battle VIP Pass before playing Kramomatic, uh, because there's no way that you're not playing down a Battle VIP Pass. Am I right? It's, it's one of those things that's uh, difficult. And yeah, so we can see that uh, we're going to be chaining some ways to draw some cards. You see the Fusion Strike system, Fusion Strike system drawing one. You see a Genesec down. Genesec can kind of trickle like this throughout the entirety of the game. And I mean, Evan can still go ahead and grab some more. Um, the only thing that's going to be difficult is uh, not necessarily having access to a Meloetta in the active spot. So kind of what Azul did last game was have Meloetta in the active spot and Meloetta on the bench just to get around that escape rope. Um, one thing that we've seen Mewla start to do is play Pokemon Catcher lately. So that's one way to get around this play, but currently it looks like both players aren't playing them. So who do we think is going to win this game? I mean, right now I think Evan has a great start. It just depends if uh, Evan, if Mew kind of pops off. Like Azul has free retreat, could free retreat into a Meloetta and then could totally be like 210 knockout turn one, build up an energy on my bench and follow it up with a knockout and win in three turns total. I don't think Evan has what it takes there. Now Azul just needs to do that plus add an escape rope on the field. So we'll see what Azul's turn brings. 
If Azul's got those battle VIP passes, anything's a possibility with Mew. It is currently our best deck in format by far. Absolutely by far. So that's uh, that's really where I would focus on. It's just so far <laughs> the best deck. Now Azul's here, thinking it out, looking through the deck with Fog Crystal. That's not a battle VIP pass, but we don't know. Maybe Azul decides to play Fog Crystal before Battle VIP Pass. Maybe it's going to be grabbing it, looking through the deck, seeing what's prized, because there's a lot on the line here. PTC Geo Store has donated 500 Fusion Strike Packs into the field, and we've also got $500 store credit to Atlas Collectibles. So these are great prizes from great companies that help sponsor this stream. So it's absolutely amazing to see these players come and play. Everyone in the top eight is walking away with healthy prize support, and everyone else who made uh, ninth and below had a really great time playing all season. It's been great to watch these players grow and blossom. Now we do see Azul with that Meloetta. So maybe uh, maybe this Genesect is going to be cracked and that one card is going to be huge. So we are seeing a knockout turn one that is a Meloetta gone from Evan. Uh, although it could just be two Fusion Strike energies gone from Azul, depending on how Evan draws out of this. Currently, Evan doesn't really have much to back it up. And when your hand gets clogged with supporters like that, it can definitely be a little bit difficult. We'll have to see uh, what's just able to happen. Um, I do like bringing up the Mew V, drawing two prize cards, putting yourself on track to draw two prize cards every single turn is going to be absolutely huge. Looks like Evan's going to try to go for Great Ball. The Mew V Max is huge. This is why I personally like Pokeball in my list, uh, just because Pokeball can grab some other things and just like can almost always grab something if you get a heads, whereas Great Ball you could easily miss. We do need to see another energy, so it looks like uh, we're going to see another Power Tablet go down, that Switch get wasted, and... Let's see if we can find an energy here for Evan. No energy, but we can use Quick Ball to discard. I would discard an Alice of Sparkle uh, because you don't want to keep some item fodder for uh, your Cramomatic. And we are seeing another Genesect. Will he get an energy off of three or will this be the disappointing start of Evan? We do see access to the energy. So looks like he's going to go ahead and try to search for a Psychic Energy, but did not check through his prize cards. Uh, or at least he probably wouldn't have done that. It's better to have more options with this deck than not. And we're gonna see a quick Techno Blast uh, go ahead and knock out that Mew V. So depending on how Azul decides to follow this up, I mean, Azul could go ahead and boss his orders, escape rope, knock out one of the Pokemon on the bench with Meloetta again. Um, we'll have to see how it plays out. There's a lot of, uh, lots of crazy things could happen. So, Cramomatic, when Cramomatic's getting heads, you gotta watch out because it can literally be anything. And when I say it could be anything, it could be anything. So, I don't know. We see uh, we see Azul slap the energy on there. Are we gonna see an Elisa Sparkle? Um, are we going to see Meloetta attack into this Mew VMAX? There's a lot of things that could really happen, but I think Evan right now is going to be on a two prize card track, State of Mind, uh, trying to go after Genesex and stuff on the bench. If you damage the Mew, Azul could easily go for Psychic Leap. If you knock out the Mew in the active, that's certainly not bad, but I think with the power tablets that Evan had to use to kind of reach for those energies, it is going to be a little bit difficult to get to that certain point in the game. And there is the Elisa Sparkle, so that Mew might just be the barrier for Evan. But if there is an escape rope, we, we might just see Azul go escape rope, take two prize cards through free. That might be better and try to plan for the knockout on the Mew in one hit. Uh, that does put Azul on track to win the game in three turns. Um, and we've already saw turn one, this would be turn two. So depending on what's on top of the deck with Rotom Phone, uh, we'll, we'll have to really find out. Uh, but I do think it could be anyone's game. So there's Cross Fusion Strike, Mladius Echo, just 210. I mean, there is the possibility that Evan does decide to go Psychic Leap and try to save some of these Pokemon. I, I honestly think that the best thing that Evan can do is try to go for a Switch Boss, knock out that Genesect on the bench, and try to do it all the way at the same time. Now, the one thing that could happen is Azul goes fan of waves and hits the hits the energy off of that Mew because Evan is going to be forced here to play a Fusion Strike energy on 
that Mewi on the bench. So Phantom of Waves might just bring Azul back into this game. It might be a card that you want to include for Mew Mirror because a lot of players like Mew's the most successful deck. A lot of players aren't necessarily trying to counter Mirror. They're trying to counter dark decks and make their decks speedier. Azul's uh, approach might be very methodical. Azul does win a lot of regionals. Uh, seen a lot of success. Players kept champ just like me. Uh, so definitely from all of my times that I've watched Azul play, these these are really the ways that I, I, I think Azul is building his deck. It's just if he's able to win Mirror. So... We do see a switch, we do see the escape rope, we do see access to it. As long as Azul does not go path to, or does not go fan of waves, uh, it looks like uh, Evan's gonna be in the clear. We do need to find another way to bring up a Genesec. That is another thing that we have to do. So it could really be anyone's game. We'll have to find that out. There's a fusion strike system. It looks like uh, pretty much everything that Evan can do is just like done. Boss's orders on top of the deck certainly looks like it's gonna be part of it. Escape rope certainly can be part of it too. I mean, you can always draw. It's not like these decks are playing Marnie or Judge. And there's the Techno Blast knocking it out. So Azul now is two turns away from winning the game. Uh, but I do think Phantom Waves would really push the boundaries of what's, uh, what could really happen here. So maybe maybe Azul goes ahead and finds that. Otherwise, I think it's just going to be as simple as finding an energy, slapping it on the Mew, and winning the game. There's already the training cord in play, so that would be really easy for Evan. Because again, Mew doesn't really have hand disruption. A lot of lists aren't playing it, so that's one thing that we got to watch out for. So, what's Azul thinking about here? I, I'm assuming Azul's gotta realize that the Fan of Waves is a possibility. Are we gonna see it from the cram matic We do see the cram matic Is that going to be the card? I don't see it yet. <laughs> Maybe it's in the prize cards. It's really one of those things where it, anything could anything could happen. And yeah, okay. So I totally missed the fan of waves going around. It looks like uh, it looks like uh, Azul is probably going to take this game. So you can see how it all happens. Um, I don't know why, where it happened. If I blinked and we we missed it, but regardless. Now Evan's going to be forced to use Ellis's Sparkle, build those energies onto the Mew VMAX, and cannot get the knockout with Power Tablets because they were forced to waste them early on in the game. They need to get three Power Tablets to bring a Techno Blast or a Meladius Echo to 300 damage. Then there's the Vitality Ban, which is kind of an uncommon tech um, in Mew nowadays, but that would bring it to 310. So it's either knocking at the Mew VMAX this turn or bust. I mean, Evan does have access to that Escape Rope, Maybe it is one of those things where uh, maybe a escape rope and Azul just sends up the wrong Pokemon. We'll, we'll have to see how that plays out. So we do see maybe the boss just brings up a Genesect and you just hope that Azul doesn't have switch in their nine card hands. You think that really could be it? Because it's really not looking like there's much else here for Evan at this point. Uh, the retreat into the Meloetta. Now Azul just needs boss switch or escape rope. I mean, I guess escape rope, they could also set up the Mew VMAX. We'll see what Azul is able to do here. There's the fog crystal. I think Azul's trying to play through everything else here. So there's Cramomatic. When you're getting the Cramomatic heads, you gotta believe that it's gonna be one of those things where it's just not gonna happen for you. So 
So there's escape rope. We do see the Mu VMAX come up because Azul's trying to get around those, maybe those power tablets, but there's one power tablet, two power tablet, three power tablets. Uh, we do need to see a vitality band or another power tablets or a boss's orders. Uh, so Azul probably dealing with some odds and maybe drawing through everything with the Rotom phone. What are we gonna see? The fourth power tablet. Looks like we're gonna see Techno Blast get an absolute destroying onto this Pokemon 330, and Azul is going to advance into the top four of the Invitational. That's what we got going on with that gameplay right there. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing Azul advance over Evan. I mean, it's really close when it comes to a Mew VMAX and all players playing at this level of the event are very great. There is only 36 players invited to this event and to see some of the world's best players play in these events is absolutely amazing. So let's stay tuned for basically the top four at some point coming up on the channel. We're gonna have that edited and recorded and put up and we're gonna be recording and putting up all these videos up this week so that everyone has access to watch and kind of take part of this event even if you didn't necessarily get to watch the live stream. I truly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It means the world to me. And my goal with this channel is to spread my love of the game and knowledge with our entire Pokemon TCG community. If you haven't already, help Signal Boost this video to other Pokemon TCG fans by liking it, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. Hopefully we reach our goals really soon. Check out this recommended video and have yourself a great day. Thanks.